Hello everyone, my name is Oliver. Welcome to my channel. Before starting the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button and give this video a like up. Adam walks into society and hugs Sally, who asks if he's had any news from Chelsea about Connor. Adam hasn't had an update, but there is other family stuff going on. It feels as though everything is spiraling right now. His son is in pain and his father's life is in the hands of a mad woman. Adam tells Sally that Jordan is a lunatic. He tells her about the kidnapping and her burning down Victoria's house. This is the woman Victor's making a deal with to smoke her out. Sally learns she's taken him hostage to make a clean getaway and can't believe how far he's gone. Adam knows that Victor can handle himself, but he's afraid for him. I'm afraid for my son, too. Sally takes his hand and tells him he's not alone. At the ranch, Victoria tries unsuccessfully to reach Nick. Michael and Cole urge her to rest like Nikki. Michael mentions Claire is in the kitchen. Cole assures Victoria that her father can handle himself, and Michael says Nick will probably have a great explanation. Victoria gripes about Jordan and wonders how much of this woman's horror they have to put up with. Michael is sure Victor has a solid plan and will be two steps ahead of Jordan. Victoria questions how anyone could know what her twisted brain will come up with. Michael reminds her Victor has got out of worse situations. Cole complains about him not filling them in on his plan. Michael says Victor will always do what's necessary to protect his family. None of them could have changed his mind. Cole tells Victoria he feels guilty for what his family has put hers through. Victoria asks him to stop blaming himself. There's nothing he could have done to change any of this. Michael watches as she takes his hand. Billy and Chance arrive at Chance of the Winters, where Devon notes that was a short trip. Billy grins, did you miss me? Devon says it was peaceful without him there. No one was trying to exert power. Billy asks, what about Mammy? He knows she wants to undo the merger. Davin says it was just a suggestion. Billy says it was also just a suggestion to change the company name. Mammy hates Jill and wants to run her out of the company completely. Devon argues that Jill owns Chancellor. Billy asks if Devon would be more comfortable if the companies were merged in name only. Devon asks if that would make Billy happy. Billy replies, 100%. I think the merger was a mistake. Devon asks why he didn't say that when they were merging. Billy says there was a lot more trust back then. His perspectives changed. His mother feels outnumbered. Devon asks if she brought him in to shift the power back to her side. Billy's representing her best interests. He notes that Devon's not subtle in his want for autonomy. Let's split the company up. You do what you do, we'll do what we do. Devon asks Chance what he thinks about all this. Chance thinks this is above his pay grade. Devon pushes to hear his opinion. Chance feels there's no room for petty in fighting. Ego is the biggest obstacle to success in any business. Billy wonders if he's directing the comments toward him or Devon. Chance thinks they both need to take a deep breath and chill out. At Daniel's place, Lucy gabbers away about getting a date for the prom. She likes the boy with the really good hair. Daniel expects to meet the boy before she goes anywhere with him. Heather tells Lucy she's on her own. Just then, Lily walks in carrying a bag of groceries and stops short at the sight of the family. Daniel takes Lily's bag and gives her a quick hug. Lily explains that she thought he was at the office and was going to surprise him, but it looks like she's the one getting the surprise. Hello, Lucy. Hello, Heather. Heather greets Lily by saying this is a surprise. Lily recaps to Daniel that it took a while for Matty to get past the death of her mentor. She'll be seeing a therapist. Once she went back to classes, she thought it was okay to come home. Heather tells Lucy they should go for a walk in the park or go shopping. They tidy up as Lily asks Daniel, What's going on? Daniel tells Lily she looks fantastic and has been gone way too long. Lily still wants to know what's going on. Heather gave her a look like she was caught or something. Heather and Lucy exit. 
Lily asks what she interrupted. Daniel insists it was nothing, but we do need to talk. Lily agrees. Can you just tell me what's going on? Daniel looks at the floor. Lily guesses. You and Heather got back together while I was gone, didn't you? At the ranch, Michael asks Victoria how she's holding up. She says she's good, but Jordan's relentlessness is getting to her. Michael understands and muses that it's fortunate Cole came into her life. Victoria says she doesn't think he could have got through this without him. Michael notes there's still a long road ahead for them and Claire. He hopes Cole plans to stay indefinitely as he's good for her and Claire. Victoria asks if he's trying to say something. Michael chuckles. He doesn't think it would be bad if something positive came out of all of this for the two of them. Michael thinks Cole is strong and trustworthy. He likes how he is with Claire and with Victoria too. Victoria agrees he's one of a kind. Michael muses about destiny bringing him back to town. Victoria says the only thing that brought him back was their daughter Claire and her crazy aunt. She informs him that if he's trying to play matchmaker, she has too much going on. The last thing she wants or needs right now is a relationship. In the other room, Cole listens. Victoria tells Michael to stop trying to distract her and Cole enters the room to say that he convinced Claire to get some rest too. Victoria is glad her mother and daughter kept each other company. Michael's worried about Nikki, who doesn't need this stress. Victor won't be pleased if it turns out to be too much for her. At society, Adam tells Sally he'll stay as optimistic as he can about his father. Sally assures him that Victor will get through this, and so will Connor. She's sure he and Chelsea will move heaven and earth to help their son, just as Victor is doing for his family. They go over him being the black sheep, and Sally says she wasn't always well behaved. They agree they'd match on a dating app. Adam wishes he'd met her years ago. Sally says, me too. Adam hates the waiting and worrying. Sally tells him worrying never changes the outcome. She says he's an amazing father and son. She's glad he opened up to her. Adam still wants to get her company under the Newman umbrella. Sally assures him they'll figure that out later. Right now, he should be at the ranch with his family, and then go be with his son. Adam hugs her and says, I love you. Sally replies, I love you. They kiss. At Daniel's place, he admits that he and Heather got back together, but it wasn't intentional. Lily assumes they slept together. Daniel confirms, we did. The pull was just too strong. Lily mocks that she was gone way too long. Isn't that what he said? Daniel explains that he and Heather wanted to get back what they lost. Lily scoffs that she was out of sight, out of mind. Why didn't he tell her? Daniel didn't want to pull her attention away from Matty or do it over the phone. Lily asks if this was going on the whole time she was gone. Daniel says it was one time a few weeks ago. After it happened, they realized it wasn't a mistake. It felt right, like they had found their way home. Lily tells him that was too much information. She should appreciate his honesty, but this really hurts. Daniel says that's the last thing he wanted to do. Lily tells him that's exactly what people say after they hurt you the most. Daniel insists Heather didn't plan this, but Lily says, of course she did. Daniel doesn't want her blaming Heather. It was a spontaneous thing. Lily argues that every day he knew something she didn't or told Heather he wanted to be with her. That was cheating. Lily exclaims, my God, what does that say about what we shared? Like, was any of it even real? Daniel insists what they had was real and that it was the furthest thing from his mind that he'd get back with Heather. Lily thinks there had to be something significant pulling them back together. Have you fallen back in love with Heather? Daniel replies, Honestly, I don't think I ever stopped loving her. Lily muses, There it is. You're in love. She knew he hadn't gotten over his feelings for Heather. Daniel ruined their relationship, and he moved on without Heather in his life. And then she moved back to town. Lily watched the whole thing happen, and she still thought he was someone she could have faith in. She sighs, This is not how I pictured my homecoming. 
Daniel apologizes. He invites Lily to yell or hit him. Lily scoffs. She won't yell or attack him. Why would I, right? Because I am so reasonable, aren't I? Daniel urges her to let it out, but she has to get out of there. Daniel asks if he should have told her right away. Lily rolls her eyes. She's so happy she didn't because Matty needed her attention. Daniel says that Devon felt that way too. Lily gulps. How long did her brother know? From the beginning. Chance walks into Crimson Lights, spots Nate, and tells him he had to get out of the office thanks to another tense meeting between Devon and Billy. He has a feeling he and Nate are a lot alike in that they want no part of that conflict. Am I reading that correctly? Nate is right there with him. He asks if Chance is off team Billy. Chance is only for the company and thinks it's time for them to step up and be the adults in the room before it all goes off the rails. At Chancellor Winters, Billy says Chance made one good point. Devon agrees. Billy should take his advice and chill out. Billy was referring to the part about ego being destructive to the workplace. Devon asks, whose ego do you think he was referring to, mine or yours? Billy wants to know why Devon won't agree to split the companies. They wouldn't be at each other's throats anymore. Devon wasn't aware that they were. Billy can admit that two powder kegs ready to blow even if Devon won't. But they don't have to explode. They can fix it with two signatures. Devon warns that Jill won't let that happen. Adam arrives at the ranch and asks about Victor. Michael's sure they'll hear something soon. Victoria grills Adam about Nick. Adam thought he would be there right now. Victoria worries that Jordan set a trap for him. What if she has him too? Michael warns her not to let her imagination run away with her. Adam suggests they call Christian's school to find out if there was a crisis. Victoria thinks Adam's right. She needs to know whether or not she should be worried about her father and brother. Just then, Victor appears with Nick behind him and says they're fine. Nick reports that it all played out exactly as their father said it would. Victor apologizes for having to do it this way. Adam asks, so, Nick was in on the plan all along. Michael asks, how did that happen? Victor says they have reason to believe it's all over now and the nightmare is finished. Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe my Isa Media to our channel and stay with Tias.